Tony El Kukui Ferguson has been one of the top fighters in the UFC lightweight division for a long time. He even won the Ultimate Fighter. And that's not all. Before his loss against Justin Gaethje in May, he was on a 12-fight winning streak. So with all of this in mind, UFC fans often wonder, why hasn't he gotten a chance to fight for the undisputed UFC lightweight championship? And also, why was it so hard to find an opponent for Tony and get him back in the octagon? Could it be that fighters are scared of facing him? Ferguson recently talked about the UFC lightweight title and took some shots at the fighters he thinks have avoided him. For example, current lightweight champion Khabib Nurmagomedov and former title holder Conor the Notorious McGregor. Ferguson said that Charles Oliveira, whom he faces at UFC 256 on Saturday in Las Vegas, is the only game opponent that wanted to fight. Oliveira is the only game opponent that wanted to fight. Doesn't want to fight. Poirier doesn't want to fight. McNuggets ran and Tiramisu's gone. We got these assholes that were going to fucking like put these guys over top of me and want to move me back down to number five. It happened before. I hate to say it, but matchmaking is like a logarithm. Found it, I called it. Been with the company for 10 years. This is what Tony Ferguson said about the other fighters, basically mocking them, saying they don't want to fight him. Tony was then asked if he believed that a victory over Oliveira, which would put him in the title contention, was his chance to be the next challenger for the UFC lightweight championship. Tony showed discontent with the matchmaking system of the UFC. He says he's tired of not getting the title shot, and explained all the reasons why they should give it to him. Ferguson gave solid arguments, like his impressive winning streak and his eight years in the company. And that title's a wet dream. Like that, that farmer's insurance commercial of it. Oh, you almost got it. Keep it going. We're just going to keep dangling in front of you. We're going to keep trailing along. I don't know what the problem is. I don't know if it's because I'm Mexican. I don't know. I'm American with Mexican parts. Go fight win streak. Eight years in the making before women's sports were even in. Honor was on welfare. Henry Cejudo in the fucking youth. Like, yeah. All these different things, and I still didn't earn a title shot. But I'm still sitting here saying, fuck the free world. It's like Eminem, right? What do you think about what Tony Ferguson is saying? Does he deserve a title shot? Are opponents like Khabib Nurmagomedov and Conor McGregor avoiding him? Or is he just not good enough to be the UFC lightweight champion? Let us know your opinion in the comments section. UFC president Dana White took a shot at Bellator MMA. White affirmed that there's much better promotions all over the world when it comes to fighter talent. Bellator MMA is known to be the UFC's main competition. When you talk about the North American MMA scene, UFC and Bellator MMA are without a doubt the first two names that come up. Although the UFC is still top promotion by far and has been for many years, Bellator MMA never stopped competing and maintaining their position as second best promotion in mixed martial arts. In fact, Bellator MMA recently signed former UFC heavyweight fighter Anthony Johnson, showing once more that they mean business. Dana White doesn't seem to worry much about Bellator though. In an interview with TSN's Aaron Bronstetter, Dana assured that Bellator does not bring the slightest worries to his head. White even said that Bellator can't even compare to other MMA shows around the globe when it comes to mixed martial arts promotions outside of the UFC. White seems to be 100% sure that his show was number one in the world. He knows it, you know it, and we all know it. Still, that doesn't mean that Bellator can't potentially become number one promotion someday. But for now, UFC has the podium. Really, if you if you look at Bellator, there's not much to be interested in. There's 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 much better promotions all over the world that are actually dealing in up and coming talent. There's lots of great shows to watch all over the world. All you guys talk about are two, um, when there are plenty of other places where actually. Dana White was not lying when he said that there are plenty of great MMA shows around the globe. For example, One Championship and Risen FF in Asia, Cage Warriors FC and KSW in Europe, 
and PFL in the United States. What do you think about what Dana said in this interview? Do you think Bellator is far from being able to compete with the UFC? Do you know about these other MMA promotions around the world? Drop your opinion in the comment section. The main event for UFC 256 will be between Davison Figueredo and Brandon Moreno. These are some things to keep in mind before and during the match. On one side, you have Moreno, who had stepped onto the UFC as a grapple first fighter, but later on has shifted into a more versatile and complete striking threat. Still only 27 years old, Moreno has been showing almost unshakable composure, and he's always determined to finish the fight stronger than his opponent. Brandon Moreno has always been a fan of the left hook, but does a much better job of controlling both his timing and targets, working them off with a jab. Another thing to keep in mind is Moreno's tendency to throw kicks when he feels in stride. Even though Moreno seems to have a solid chin, he would be playing with fire if he leans too much on that strategy with Figueredo. Even the strongest chin must be aware when facing a power like Davison's. Coming on the other side, and appearing to be a pressure-fighting wild man on the Brazilian regional scene, Davison Figueiredo noticeably sharpened his style strategy since he stepped into the UFC octagon. The current UFC champion's best assets are his head and his trunk movement. But now, Figueiredo will add a long framing defense in both stances. He will also throw many jabs and straightforward strikes to establish his range. This approach will bring up Figueiredo's length, but it also entices risky entries from his opponent, which will up the Brazilian's powerful counters. If he's unloading counter crosses or uppercuts, Figueiredo demonstrates incredible timing and anticipation to go along with a power that flyweight fighters aren't used to managing. Who do you think will win in this event? Let us know who you are betting on. It's ironic to say that the UFC's toughest fight will be in court over the next few years. A group of former UFC fighters that has been suing the UFC recently scored a key legal victory on Thursday, since federal judge Richard Boulware has granted their lawsuit class action status. The antitrust lawsuit goes all the way back to 2014. Initially started by former UFC competitors Kung Lee, John Fitch, and Nate Quarry, the fighters filed against UFC's parent company. The lawsuit claims that Ultimate Fighting Championship has abused its monopoly power in the mixed martial arts market, minimizing the fighters' paycheck. Although there are competitor promotions that still remain like Bellator and the PFL, other MMA promotions like Strikeforce, Pride, and WEC have been absorbed by UFC. Former UFC fighter Kung Lee seemed to be very happy with a legal victory. Lee said in a statement provided by the MMA Fighters Association that this legal victory represents a big victory for all fighters. Lee claimed that the UFC has been cheating fighters for too long now. This drastic change in status will basically provide money from a legal victory or settlement to 1,200 fighters who competed in the UFC between late 2010 and 2017. What do you think about the former competitors suing the UFC? Do you think they will be able to go through with the case? Let us know your predictions for this matter down below in the comments. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit that like button. Also, subscribe to this channel to keep yourself updated with MMA news.